Hi, this is Julie Hart, and you're listening to Pipe Long Radio, the best there is, the best there was, the best there ever will be. Howdy, howdy, everyone. This is Paul London, the intrepid traveler, and you're listening to Pipe Long Radio. Hey, this is professional wrestler and certified DDP yoga instructor Stevie Richards telling you that you're listening to Pipe Long Radio. This is the king of the mound, Jeff Jarrett, the founder and CEO of Global Fort Wrestling, and you're listening to Pipe Bomb Radio. I'm waking up You're listening to Pipe Bomb Radio with your host, the founder, Felix Olmedo, and the godfather, Nate Milton. Welcome to the new Welcome, everybody, to Pipe Bomb Radio this quiet Saturday evening. We've got a very special guest coming back to the show to do a part two with us since I felt like, well, for one thing, it was on my birthday. And number two, I just don't think we really reached the tip of the iceberg with him. You know, we talked about a lot of areas of his career, but we never really got, at least I don't feel like we've got enough information. So I've asked him to come on back, and he's agreed. And he's definitely waiting for our call. And we'll have some fun tonight. So I'm not going to keep him waiting too long. Nate should be joining us here momentarily. So without any further ado, let's get this party started. Give me just a second here, folks, as I go ahead and dial the number. And we'll have some fun. Alrighty, here we go. We're going to go ahead and dial in now. So let's get it going. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice Uh-oh. message system. Seven. All right, well, we'll try that once more in about maybe two seconds or so. So maybe uh might be on the other line. Uh, we'll have some fun here. We'll get this going. And Nate, I'm not sure if you're listening in. If you're calling, go ahead and call in, man. We're giving we're giving uh, Mr. Fulton a call. A legendary Bobby Fulton of the Fantastics joining us right now. So here we go. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic oh, voice message okay. system. In a moment, I guess. <laughs> Well, in the meantime, we'll give it a couple more minutes, and we'll try to call again. Bear with us, folks. Sometimes uh, technical difficulties either on my end or we're just having issues with the, the particular numbers. So I will call Mr. Fulton back here momentarily. In the meantime, we can talk about a couple of things. First off, who's going to WrestleMania? I am. I'm still wondering if Nate's going to go to WrestleMania or not. I don't know, Nate. What do you think? Are you going to go to WrestleMania this year? Right now, it's not looking too good, brother. How you doing tonight, man? <laughs> I'm not doing too bad. I was I just tried to reach out to Mr. Fulton, and uh, I'm guessing he's either on the other line or whatever the case, because they went directly to voicemail. So we're going to kill some time a little bit, and, and we'll try back here again in about maybe a minute or two. Um, we can always touch on the idea. Now, let me pose a question to you real quick, because obviously we've got the WWE Network only nine ninety nine. Yep, I said it. I pulled an Austin. <laughs> I can't believe it. Anyways, <laughs> what do you think of these network specials that we have here? Because every now and then we'll get them, like we did the one with uh, when they were in Tokyo last year. Uh, something about the something I forget the name of it, but it was a network special featuring Brock Lesnar, of course. And then they've got another one coming up next Saturday night called Roadblock. Do you think these are good ideas or no? I think that. You know, the events like uh, when Lesnar was overseas or, you know, some smaller matches are, are, are pretty good. I think they're a great addition to the network. I don't I don't know how I feel about Roadblock, though. It feels unnecessary. Uh, it mm-hmm. feels like something that, you know, I think especially by putting you know, Triple H and Ambrose on the match, it, it – I think it, it could be a cool show, but it's something that could detract from, from WrestleMania. Okay. 
Hmm. We'll talk more about that. I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to try one more time here. And then after this, I'll, I'll give it one more shot after this, and then we'll either have to reschedule or whatever the case. But I did speak to Mr. Uh, Mr. Fulton earlier today. He did say he would be on with us. So I did, I did speak to him. So let's try this again. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Seven. Okay, well, we'll keep trying, folks. We'll keep trying. I don't know if he's online or whatever the case may be that something may have come up. Sometimes these things do happen. Uh, I talked to him earlier in the day, and something comes up all, all of a sudden. You know, hey, life happens. You, know, you just have to adjust and, and keep going, keep moving forward. But um, as I mentioned, we'll, we'll kill a few minutes more, and then I'll try one last time. Worst case scenario, we'll reschedule Mr. Fulton for another time. But uh, back to the issue at hand. Now, I think it seems kind of rushed in a way. Not even rushed. It just seems almost pointless because I, I get I, – okay, I understood the fact that they had to put uh, Ambrose in a high-profile match, and they felt, okay, well, we're not going to give him a title match. We're not going to put him in the main event. But here, here, we'll give him Brock Lesnar, and that, that, that'll, that'll suffice. So that, that match is made for WrestleMania, obviously. And it seems like they're just trying to give give a dog a bone here because, in reality, they're not going to give him any championship matches, main event in WrestleManias, but one of the main events will be okay. What's the point of this? I, I, I don't get it. Uh, maybe I'm not seeing the relevancy of, of, of Ambrose doing this, or maybe they're just trying to give it like a, uh, what do you call it, like a backup, so almost like a, I don't want to say a backup plan, but almost like a, here here's second prize. We won't get you. We won't give you first place, but here's second place. He can have that. <laughs> yeah, you're you're right, Felix. It does feel like a, like a consolation prize almost. That's the it, word I was it, thinking of. I couldn't think of it. There you go. Like you know what you you didn't uh, you didn't uh, place, but you get a participation trophy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's, that's, that's know, the though, feeling Felix. I'm getting with this. Like to me, between. Uh, you know, I granted you and I are a little bit more old school than, than some of the listeners out there, but back in the day, mm-hmm. you had the Rumble, and then the next big show you had was Mania. And, you know, they've added a pay-per-view in between there since then, but having Fastlane and Roadblock seems like overkill. It seems like we should be telling a straightforward story from now until WrestleMania, and even though I don't have a problem with Ambrose and Triple H in a match, it feels like this is something that probably should have happened earlier because right now the focus should be on Triple H and Roman Reigns. Mm-hmm. I would maybe maybe have decided maybe to put that as a tag team match. Maybe have uh, Triple H and Sheamus or Triple H and somebody taking on these two. I could see that. Yeah. But at the same time, they're kind of force feeding the tag team issue with these two. And I just feel like they need to either turn Ambrose heel or they need to turn Reigns heel because it's too much. It's, it, it's too much. And I like both guys. Both guys are entertaining in their own aspect. Well, you know, some say Roman Reigns has no charisma whatsoever. I don't know if I agree with that. You know, he's. I think he's getting trying to get his feet wet a little bit, trying to get in there and get this going because they really do want to make him the next big star with, with Cena, you know, starting to wind down some and not be all on him. But uh, I don't know. I, I digress. Maybe I'm just overthinking it. But I still feel like maybe they should do something drastic with these two because it's needed. It's needed. Seth Rollins is out of action right now. He's rehabbing, obviously, to show that picture that blew up everything on Facebook with Cena, <laughs> with Rollins, with Cesaro at, at the Performance Center. Oh, my God. Is is Rollins a good guy now? <laughs> really? Come on. <laughs> Kayfabe died a long time ago. I don't know. I just think that something needs to be done with either Rollins or, or Reigns and, and, and just kind of t- tweak it a little bit. Give it something that nobody would see coming. You know, if they need to give uh, Reigns a, a manager, so be it. Give him a mouthpiece because nobody likes the fact that he can't. He, he doesn't cut a good promo. You need to feel that way anyway. And, well, Ambrose, <laughs> he's just like the little engine that could. You keep knocking him down, keep knocking him down, and he still gets up and like, come on, give me some more, give me some more. Kind of just sound like Buster Rhymes when I said that. Okay, now I'm aging myself. Buster Rhymes, they haven't heard Buster Rhymes sing in years. But 
Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's been a, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. <laughs> what do you think? Do you think we should give it another maybe five more minutes and then try to call him one more time? Yeah, I, I, I definitely think we should because you know the people tuned in to hear. Uh, but uh, sure, you know, r- real quick in, in, in terms of your last point, uh, this past uh, not this week but uh, the week before on the Kings of Sport. We were able to, to to bring Brian Mann out of captivity from hiding in parts unknown. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to bring Brian. Hopefully we'll have Brian on uh, Pipe Bomb Radio here one of these weeks uh, in the near future. Sure. But Brian Brian brought up an interesting uh, parallel, an interesting comparison, and I wanted to see what you thought of this. Uh, Brian said that kind of reminds him. Obviously, he's not as legendary as this guy ended up becoming. But he says he reminds me of a young Mark Callis. He reminds me hmm. of Undertaker. When Taker first was in WCW and later first entered the WWF, he was a guy that they protected, that they knew where to put him in his spots. And they, he wasn't a guy that they force-fed down the fans' throats. And even when he became a main eventer, when he became a champion, the show wasn't built around him 100% of the time. And he, Brian's thinking was, if they had protected this guy much like they did when he was in the sheet to this point, we might see a very different reaction from the fans. But because they only know one way to kind of book a babyface champion, and that's the John Cena playbook, they forced him to do stuff that he really shouldn't be doing, which is, you know, 10-minute promos off the top of television shows or acting in skits backstage. Like, he should come in, kick butt, take names and, you know, say very little. And so I, I I don't know if it's too late for them to try to pull back the reins, no pun intended, and, hmm. and the roll on overexposing him. But that was something interesting Brian uh, brought up to me. And I'm, well, hmm. well, and I just also just got to notice as you were talking right now, too, I just want to throw that in there. It will, looks it looks like we will unfortunately have to reschedule Mr. Fulton for another time. He is a bit under the weather. He wasn't feeling very well. So he will not be joining us tonight. And I do offer my sincerest apologies uh, to those who tuned in to listen to him tonight. We will have him back. He's been on the show. He knows us already. And we'll just look to get him back another time. And, again, I apologize, and we hope uh, we hope Mr. Fulton uh, recovers and is able to join us again in the near future. So, again, he will not be joining us tonight. We will have him, on, have him back on another time. And it's unfortunate, but it is the way it is. So, with that said, let's just keep the show going and just talk about this week's Monday Night Raw and SmackDown. I've got to mention, by the way, if I haven't already said this, Mauro Ranallo. I'm really starting to like this guy. I could see him definitely <laughs> being the, the 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 voice of Monday Night Raw eventually. I love Moro. I think Moro is great, but I unfortunately I don't see that happening. Just because of well, at least not as long as uh, Vincent Kennedy McMahon. Is. True. I mean, he obviously likes Cole for a reason. Cole is yes. a little puppy. <laughs> Like he 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 got rid of Jim Ross in favor of Cole. I think that well, you know maybe once Triple H. I just don't think that Vince over. ever liked ever liked Jim. No, I just don't think Vince. I don't no. think Vince ever liked the fact that that Jim Ross knew more about wrestling than he did. Not only did he know more about wrestling than uh, Vince did, but he was somebody that had credibility. And then, although you know we all. I love Vince McMahon. He is someone who, over the years, yeah, you, sometimes, you know, you got to take whatever grain of salt. Whereas with JR, you know, you felt, even though, even the times that he was faving us, you felt that this was a quality that, unfortunately, I don't think Vince ever really possessed. True. You know, Vince was a good announcer. He wasn't great, but he was good. Him, whenever they yeah. paired him with... Uh, with Roddy Piper and, and 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 Randy Savage, or even going back even further than that, when it was him and Jesse the Body, oh, those two bickering at each other was hilarious. <laughs> and Vince trying to be the the business straight, you know, he couldn't need to call the play by play man, you know, he tried to hold it straight and 
nobody knew he was the boss at the time, you know. <laughs> they, 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 you could feel the intensity sometimes go on between them because you need Vince really wanted to let Jesse have it at times, but <laughs> never got that far. Maybe in court it did, but otherwise, no. Yeah. But um, obviously, this past Monday, Stephanie got a reward and had to spit a little fire at her brother. Now Shane's going to be returning this coming Monday, but let's not let us not forget the dead man returned this past Monday and told Vince, "I am not responsible for what's going to happen to your son. His blood is on your hands." And I'm just telling you folks, you guys, people are shitting on this match. There's no reason for it. It's going to be a good match. Now, and now let's put it this way. It's not going to be the best wrestling match. Of course not. No. Far from it. It's got a gimmick <laughs> in there. It's got two people that can put on one hell of a show. And therefore, I'm just going to sit back and enjoy it for what it is, regardless of who wins. Because the ones who truly win are going to be the fans. I think it'll be I think it'll be I think it'll be a good match, Felix. I think that it'll it'll be a a spectacle much like the Triple H Sting match was last year, but it'll be an enjoyable spectacle. But the thing oh, is Oh, please don't let them bring out the NWO. No. <laughs> I maybe we'll get a uh, run in for the Mean Street Posse. <laughs> now that I would believe because I actually am a friend of Pete Gass on Facebook. And he kind of hinted around the fact that maybe the Mean Street Posse might make an appearance at WrestleMania. So don't necessarily completely rule that possibility out. That, that'd, be, that'd, be a, that'd be a cool little moment. But my issue, Felix, is not with the match itself. My issue is more with the story because I think unless they've got something mind-blowing, and they may have, you know, we, we don't know. There, there's plenty of time for them to continue to craft this story as we get closer to WrestleMania, and who knows how it'll turn out. But I think they've, as of right now, just from what we've been seeing on, shown on television, they've really kind of booked both Taker and Shane into a corner. Because, and the standpoint of Taker, you know, he is somebody that the fans obviously all love and respect, but it feels like you know, he's doing Vince McMahon's bidding, which is not a great spot for this legend to be put in. Uh, and for Shane, he's the guy that's coming back to conquer babyface, but in order for him to get control of Raw, which is what all the fans want, he's got to beat the Taker. So it's, it's, it's interesting the way to kind of position these guys. I don't know if... I don't know if this is the way that I would have gone, but like we said, you know, there's, there's plenty of time for them to kind of craft this story, and hopefully they, they give us something that really knocks our socks off at WrestleMania. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I have no doubt that they will. They're going to get pull out all the stops and give us plenty of memorable moments to talk about. So <clears throat> with that, you know, everything played out as it should, in a sense, because a lot of us are already predicting what matches are going to happen at WrestleMania. I'll give you a case in point, the Divas. Now, obviously, they had uh, the boss taking on the the last kicker, or is it Irish last kicker? Whatever. whatever. Becky Lynch taking Mm. on Sasha Banks. Obviously, Raw went to a no contest. And then, was it a no contest? I think it did. And then SmackDown, obviously, You've seen what happened there. So it made it a triple threat. Honestly, they should have just booked it that way to begin with. And I don't know why they didn't decide to put somebody else in it, but I think they wanted to let the youngsters take it and see what they can do with it on the biggest stage of them all. So I don't know. I feel like they should have put maybe – well, maybe I'm jumping jumping the gun too, too soon, but I felt like maybe they should, should have put Bailey into this. Am I jumping the gun too soon on that? Because, I mean, that was a prediction at one point that maybe Bailey would jump into this too. Uh, I think Bailey, it'd it it, it, it it'd be a great match if, if it was a uh, fatal four-way, but I do think that Bailey, they have the, with Bailey, they have the luxury of being able to wait patient because, A, you've got three girls in Sasha, Beck, Charlotte, that can not only have great matches, but I think they can tell really cool stories within the three of them for the next 
month or so, maybe even a little bit longer than that. And also with Bailey, you've got a great thing in NXT where you got the girls that she can work with. And I'm really looking forward to see what she can do with Asuka. I think that'll be a, a great little rivalry there. Uh, and do you think she'll you know, make her debut after one, Mania? Um, I think it'll she'll make her debut before the summer. I'm not sure if she'll make her debut the night after Mania, though, because I do think that like I'm thinking maybe we get the Bullet Club showing up. Maybe we get Nakamura debuting the night after Raw that maybe you don't want to mm-hmm. put all your eggs in one basket and you want to space these surprises out a little bit. So I think she'll be on the main roster before the summer. I, I'm just not sure if it'll be you know that Raw, which is going to be crazy the night after Mania feeling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I agree in that in that wholeheartedly because it just seems tradition. It seems, especially after the New York one. No, no, no. I'll go back even further than that. I would have to say that I can recall going back to 2012 after the one in, in Miami. Was it Miami? Yeah, it was Miami. When Brock Lesnar returned, it just yeah. seemed from that moment on, every year it just got bigger and bigger and bigger and crazier things were happening and new debuts, AJ Lee coming in and winning on the first night. Was it AJ? No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was Paige. It was uh, Paige. I, Paige coming in and winning on the first night, defeating AJ. And AJ, I don't know if you've seen that photo shoot she did. She is looking toned up, muscled, and looking good. Good for her. <laughs> Little thing, little, little tiny thing, but she's looking muscular as all get out. Good for her, because you know she seems that they're having better success once they're out of the WWE. I mean, look at look at uh, look at uh, what was her name? God, what was her name? I know her name is Celeste in real life. Um, oh, uh, Caitlin. Caitlin, Caitlin, yeah. And she she went on to do some crazy things. She's doing them. She's very successful with her, I guess, her supplement line or whatever that she because she's in the, into the health and fitness right now, which is a huge thing going on. I mean, people get into that and it's just, it's just, you know, no matter who gets into it, I think it just kind of helps get up, grow bigger and bigger and it brings people into wanting to be healthy and, and, and fit and eating right and so forth. Why it's do you think funny that... Felix, oh, because go I was going to say, it's funny because a lot of these girls look, and, and guys too, quite frankly, once they're kind of away from that grind of the WWE schedule for a little while, they look they look so much happier, so much more relaxed, and, and quite frankly, they look healthier. Yeah, and I think, and, and what's funny is, it just does, it, it doesn't stop there. It just, it seems once they get out from under that umbrella, they're almost like they can take that sigh of relief, and just breathe and be like, okay, they're not having to take that burden on their back. Now, don't get me wrong. WWE, when you're on top, they treat you so good, you make tons and tons and tons of money. And you're known. You're no, the notoriety obviously comes with the territory. But the moment you're done, or let me put it this way, if I go even say, the moment they don't need you and they spit you out, do, you, do people ever hear from them again? Do they get, oh, they get referred to as formerly known as this in WWE and I don't know, does that kind of tarnish your career as you're formerly known as or former WWE? Uh, is that, I don't know, it just kind of it sounds bad to say it that way. Could it be considered an insult? I don't know. I've just seen a lot of people, you know, take that and be happy with it and some that kind of are bitter about it, you know? When I've gone to these signings and uh, uh, Russell Khan and so forth, some people seem happy about it, some people don't. Some people just have a little bit of bitterness in their heart, saying that, you know, they, they, the WWE ruined their life or something. And I think it's part of that, Felix, is, you know, just how people are different naturally. You know, some people are optimistic. Some, you know, some people are somewhere in the middle. But also, whatever their experience was, you know, with the company, did they feel that they were treated well? Did they feel that they were given a, a real opportunity? You know, in some cases... Uh, you know, did you feel discriminated against? And so I think, you know, the WWE is a blessing and a curse. It's kind of like living in a big city like, you know, New York or Chicago or L.A. You know, yeah, it's great, and you're in the center of a lot of cool things and, and a lot of really interesting and unique people, 
but sometimes it's, it's a little much, you know, and you just want to kind of get away to a small town or somewhere out in the country. So I can see how some of these guys and girls are like, you know, it was really cool being, it was really cool being a WWE superstar, but I'm happy, you know, kind of being outside of that hectic schedule. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, it's funny because this just keeps popping up on my Facebook feed every now and then. Apparently, TNA has gone into some financial burden again. And they're up for sale, so they say, because apparently Panda Energy is no longer a money backer of this company. And they keep throwing the idea of Shane buying TNA and coming after Vince. Now, I do believe there's going to be a brand extension, but I just can't see TNA closing down the doors just yet. They've lasted this long. Yes, they have not, they're, not, they're not in the highest of highs where they could be. And that's a shame. But they're also not dead yet. I have to keep referring back to the idea, the, 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 what, what uh, Mike Bennett had mentioned, both Ring of Honor and TNA were never given any credit for being able to survive very long against the monster that is WWE. But they've made it this far. And they aren't, they aren't dead yet. And for what it's worth, I actually have been enjoying some of the shows that I've watched on TNA lately. True, I can't stand Josh Matthews as far as I can throw him. He sucks as a commentator. I mean, just call it spade a spade. He sucks. You know, Pope <laughs> is just Pope. He's just annoying. But, I mean, he, 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 that's his job, to be annoying. Josh just can't – I don't feel emotion in him. I feel like it's all robotic. And I just don't feel it. You know, when, when you have announcers like uh, Mike Tanay, Taz, even Taz with his monotone ass, you know, even Taz is entertaining, mildly. But, I mean, I just don't feel it from <laughs> Josh. But that being – going away from that, obviously, TNA is not gone. And they're still around. I can't see the McMahon showing any interest in these guys just yet. Although WWE has been noticing and trying to take away talent from Lucha Underground, from New Japan, from obviously Ring of Honor. And dare I say maybe TNA? What are your thoughts on all this? I think TNA is an interesting proposition. I think that you've got a situation here where they're, you know, openly looking for investors. And it's, it's always tricky when you get into an investment situation, Felix, because the people that are property or the company or the idea up for sale, you know, you never know how much involvement they want in the company, how much influence they want with the company. And Dixie mm-hmm. Carter is someone who I don't see wanting to give someone else 100% control of CNA. And if I'm an investor, maybe one of the things I want is the ability to do things my way. And I can't do that if Dixie Carter is looking over my shoulder or wants to be on TV every week or things of that nature. So I think they're going to have to make some hard choices. Um, I I guess there are reports that they want to expand the company. And I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not right now. They've got a nice little groove going. In terms of their shows and the program is much better than it was when it was on Destination America. I think with people like Mike Bennett and uh, Maria Bennett and people like EC3 and Matt Hardy, who has surprisingly become one of my favorite heels in wrestling right now, I think there's a lot to work with with TNA. He's playing that whiny champion pretty good, isn't he? Yeah. Big big Money Matt is is a great villain. But sometimes Felix there's something to be said for being content with where you're at for the time being and not trying to get too big too and hopefully that's not something the TNA falls into because I do think they've gotten better uh, but the to me is not seeking to expand and challenge the WWE head on because that's just silly they're going to lose that fight every time but they've got to find their own lane they've got to find what makes them unique what makes them special And, uh, you know, maybe they can find somebody who's willing to come on board and work with Dixie Carter hand-in-hand because uh, I do think there's value left with this company. Well, it's obvious obvious they don't need Eric Bischoff. They don't need Hulk Hogan. No. No. Brother. Um, (laughs) 
should they dip into the real world type of scenario with the reality stars? Well, they tried that. I mean, for God's sake, they had J. It was a J. Wow. They had J. Wow, and they had Ronnie yeah. from Jersey Shore. And yeesh, I enjoyed seeing <laughs> Snooki with a cartwheel and ass like WrestleMania. <laughs> Honestly, uh, that was more entertaining than what they did with Jay Wow. Jay Wow couldn't. They, what the hell happened? That that was just. A, I'm sorry. That was just bad. That was just bad. Yeah. But <laughs> let me tell you, Felix. But, if if I were looking, for it. let's let's say you know, let's say this is a fantasy world where I can kind of choose the best investor for a wrestling company. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm picking somebody that a has succeeded in other business. Somebody, that is smart. I'm picking somebody that kind of is tied into current pop culture. And I know a show that you uh, enjoy is Shark Tank. Sure. If I was looking for a the prime investor for a wrestling company, I'd think about somebody like Mark Cuban. Who he's very particular about what he gets involved with, too. But that's not a bad idea. Mark I mean, Cuban is that's smart. He's somebody that, that's outspoken. Like, I, yeah, I, I, obviously he wouldn't do it. But if we're, if, you know, if we're out there in kind of fantasy land of who would be the prime guy, if not Mark Cuban, somebody like Mark Cuban. You know, I'm thinking somebody that, you know, maybe is owner an owner of a NBA team or an NFL team. Somebody that's already dabbled in kind of the sports entertainment world, and somebody that would be able to kind of direct. Dixie and, and kind of guide her in how to make money and how to generally continually losing fans and losing money. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, but that being, I, I, see, I see them, yeah, as far as Cuban goes, I could see him getting involved in some form or fashion if, there, if there's a way to make money out of it and lots of it. Yeah. On the other hand, Mark <laughs> is one person that if he sees even an inkling, a possibility in the company, even depending, it doesn't matter how small and crummy it is, but if he sees an inkling of light, possibility of a, this company just completely skyrocketing to the top, he'll jump on board. I've seen him do it. And, yeah. and the companies have made millions, and he's a happy camper. That's why he's a billionaire. He's not a millionaire. He's a billionaire. <laughs> and very smart one at that, but very, very direct. Now, I could see him getting involved, but there ha- there would be some uh, – now, let me, let, me, let me color this picture here. If he got involved with TNA, oh, there, ha- there would have to be some drastic changes. Dixie Carter, you're fired. Bring in somebody who has any kind of sense to run a wrestling company. Who's yep. done it? You know? There's not many people that could run a good wrestling company. I give credit where credit's due. The McMahon family have been doing it for several several years, several decades, excuse me, for over almost a hundred years that they've been promoting. Obviously, Ben said that. And if you're going to bring somebody in to run TNA, who could you bring? Who would want to come? If it's broke, is it better left to be unfixed? I mean, they've offered Jim Ross, they've offered Paul Heyman, they've offered uh, God. I can't even imagine who else they've asked to come down. Because obviously the ones who are doing it aren't doing good enough. You'd have to really get them going and get people involved and don't go after WWE's leftovers. Well, Bring in new stars. I push think, them. Well, I think the biggest mistake they made besides not really giving an honest effort with Paul Heyman is when they had the opportunity to sit down with Jim Ross. And... Mm-hmm. They talked with Jr. They met with Jr. And I think Jr. is a guy who would make sense not only from a company standpoint because he would he's he's been in the WWE. He's been in the NWA. He knows how corporations that that promote wrestling should work, should operate. But he got an eye for talent, and he can help find the next big star, the guy that's or the girl that's got a big time deal in, in the next five years or so. JR to me, and you can, you can have JR on commentary. Like, I think Jim Ross and the Pope would be a pretty entertaining combination. So, I think not <laughs> really going after JR, yeah, not going after JR to me is one of the biggest mistakes TNA ever made. Agreed. Agreed. I mean, the thing with Jim, and, and I think he likes the freedom because he was under the microscope with WWE every step of the way. They rode his ass until they couldn't ride him anymore. 
and did everything unthinkable they could do to this man, embarrass him, humiliate him, make him look bad in front of everybody, and he hung on. True. Mm-hmm. Now, I have heard rumors that Jim Ross isn't always the best businessman he I hear. He's, a, he's, a, he's an asshole at times. But what he's done, unquestionably, is legendary. One of the best in the best. And does not deserve to be made fun of after all the stuff he's been through with his uh, bouts with no. Bell's palsy and an apparent paralysis on his face. And, you know, he's been put through hell. And as I said, WWE used him and abused him and spit him out, and he was done. To get back into that again, he really had – he would have to sit down and really give it some thought because he obviously is still calling matches. He's still calling action just on his terms. Yeah. And that's what I think he likes. Wait, and that's you know, why he's done the Jim Ross. You know, he does Felix, his own podcast. Me, one of the most attractive things about TNA for somebody like a JR or for somebody like a Heyman or even a, a Gabe Sapolsky, somebody that yeah, turned this company around is, is – like, I think Gabe Sapolsky would be great in, in, uh, in TNA. Unfortunately, it looks like uh, Triple H may have already kind of sunk his club. No, I think so too. Uh, but I think that one of the most attractive things about TNA is it's not a 48 or 50 week grind like the WWE is, you know, with the way that they've got the taping set up because they're not running house shows. They've got their taping set up. They do a overseas tour every now and then, but you're really only working six months out of the year with TNA as opposed to a year round full-time commitment with the WWE. Well, see, if you remember too, Back in the 90s, WWE would record their shows and play them weeks out. TNA is doing that. Yep. If they were able to do their shows every week live, could they present a good competition, an alternative, if you will, to WWE? Because, you know, it's oversaturation. There's too much wrestling out there. I never thought I'd ever say that, but there really is. (laughs) And now with the addition of the WWE Networks, you know, and every access of entertainment that's out there from YouTube to Facebook to Twitter to everything, social media has everything out there for you. Now, TNA could really stand to do some changes, and I hope one day that it does happen. I just don't see them dying because I think they've got tremendous talent, and I know it seems like I'm bootlicking, but I'm really not. But at the same time, I'd love to see Mike Bennett and Maria in WWE. I really would. At least one run. Because that guy, he's he's such an incredible talent that he's he's not somebody that he, he's somebody that they should be fighting for, because he's just that good. Just saying. And the way she, the way Maria is is presented was presented in WWE was a joke. She's nowhere near as yeah. ridiculously stupid as they made her out to be. And her coming back and having a new attitude, a new swagger, would be something refreshing. So there's they, that. Have and you been, obviously have you been Ethan Carter. Carter. Look at that one. What's that? I said, have you been watching uh, Impact lately? Because they've been they're, they're setting up this uh, this whole deal with her and Gail Kim. It's it's been pretty interesting. Unfortunately, I didn't catch it this past Tuesday. I should have, but I didn't get a chance to. But Gail, but yeah, they've been, they've been doing one. some really interesting stuff with Marie and Gail. Gail is somebody who is very interesting to me. Very underutilized talent in WWE. Yes. Superbly talented woman. Yes, it is helpful that she is beautiful. However, she can get in the ring and she can fight. She can wrestle. So the fact that they don't showcase that and they, when they had her, they really screwed that one up. I could see her becoming a TNA Hall of Famer one day, without a shadow of a doubt. Because no question, she really no puts the knockouts, the knockouts division on the map, her and Kong. And as many times as Kong's yep. been fired, Kong is another one that should be recognized in TNA. She's another woman that helped build that knockouts division. You know, who, who, who knows where she's going to go? People are still saying now that, now that uh, Kong's gone, could they set up a future match for her and maybe bait China out of coming out of retirement for one more match and put her up against Kong? That would be a dream match. That'd be money right there. Will it ever happen? I can't say yes and I can't say no. I'd love to see it because I, I don't know if it would ever happen. 
because they've also, I mean, Kong's talked about retirement too. So, I don't know. And that'd be fun. That that'd be a fun matchup. And it's it's really unfortunate that the situation with uh, Kong and uh, Rebby went down the way it did because she was doing some of her best character work, Felix, right before they went on the European I was tour. Enjoying you know, that. She was. She was, you know, she was talking more. She was showing more personality, and the way that you know they positioned her with his dollhouse, I was like, "This is really cool." I, I can't wait to see where they go next. Unfortunately, you know what went down went down, and, and she's no longer with the company. But and you know you can't take away from how she, along with Gail, helped to build that division that at one time was you know the best women's wrestling in America. But you know it's. It's funny the way some of these companies use their women and portray their female characters. It's like, mm, like I, I really enjoy what TNA time. They kind of got away from it during the – but now they're. it feels like they're trying to get back to that old style of knockouts wrestling. I, I, you know what? I really would love to see that happen. They've got some great female talent. They're just not using them right not using enough of them because what their main problem, I think this is one of their biggest problems is that they're, and it's not a bad idea and it's not a bad problem, but when you rely on it too much, where does your company go? And what I mean is, is that they tend to rely too much on former WWE talent. They need to stop that. They had their homegrown talent. They lost them. There's still a few that hung in that are around, but when the money stopped, so did they. You know, when their opportunity stopped, so did they. You know, you still got James yep. Storm, you still got Bobby Roode, and a handful of others, but the majority of them are gone. I don't know. It just needs a whole and, rehaul, reconstruction of that whole company. And it's crazy, Felix, because if you just list the names on paper of the people that have left this company, it's, it's, it's all almost like, man, this, this, this group alone, you could start a pretty good promotion with it. You know, guys like Samoa Joe, Austin Aries, AJ Styles, uh, Sting, Christopher Daniels, Frankie Kazarian, MVP, Kenny King, Low Key. It's like, man, uh, Victoria, Mickey James. Like, there are, there's a lot of talent that have come through those doors. Talent has never been issue with TNA. It's been the way that talent has been portrayed and also corporate structure of TNA performance. Yeah. I don't know. And then, you know, with, with the whole issue with Jeff Jarrett and Karen and their global force, I have yet to see anything come from that. They still have shows. Mm. But what do you hear about it? What do you know about it? I don't know much about it. I don't know really, really what the hell's going on if they're only touring certain parts of the country. I it's, mean, I understand. It's weird. Like, it's weird, Felix, because every report that we get, you know, from the tours or from the TV tapings that they did earlier uh, have been positive. But the issue is... Oh, sure. And I hate to, I hate to say it because, you know, I, I like Jeff Jarrett. I respect Jeff Jarrett. He was great when he came mm-hmm. on our, our show. But mm-hmm. if they don't get a TV deal, it really doesn't mean anything because... Even though we're in an age where, you know, the Internet is more prevalent, at the end of the day, for wrestling or for any startup sports company, TV still matters. And if they can't sign a deal, I don't know how much longer they'll be able to kind of keep. Well, look at Ring of Honor. I mean, Ring of Honor didn't have much of a TV deal. They had Internet pay-per-views. Finally, they got on a, a very, very relatively small network. We're still being able to be watched, but the majority of their way they were getting their, their their shows out was through the internet. And now I think they're out on TV a little bit more. So I think they even yeah. they were even coming on before before uh, TNA was coming on. I think back when they were on the was it um, the was Destination it on, That's the one. I think they were still even on that one. But I mean, they yeah. have so I'm saying TNA can definitely use a lot of reconstruction. A lot of work, and it's going to take a lot of work. You know, to get down into the the bottom, the depths of the bottom of the of that barrel, if you will, and just build on the all the way back up. It can do. They can do it if they really wanted it. 
right now. They're just kind of getting by, and I think that's suffice enough for them. And it's sad, but it is what it is. But on to another question I wanted to throw at you. With the particular announcement of all the Hall of Famers in WWE going in this year for this class, who do you think should be the ones inducting them? For instance, Sting. Who should induct him? Godfather. Uh, the Freebirds. Uh, who else? I think that's the only ones that have been announced so far. We're still expecting a couple more. but Yeah, those, those are the only ones announced. We There is like a list floating around of the probable inductees, but in terms of TV, it's uh, Godfather, uh, Sting, and... Uh, have they announced the free birds? Yes, they have. Okay, so we, we've got those three. Uh, but apparently, you know, Jacqueline's going to be inducted. Uh, Regis Philbin's going to be inducted. Uh, but those haven't been officially announced yet. No. So I think, you know, for some of these are really easy. Like for Sting, it's a no-brainer. And it's got to be Flair. Woo! Yeah, and he's been announced as his inductor. Uh, like if if they picked anybody else, that would be that would show me that they had no understanding of who Sting was or is. If they chose I'm anybody they other Kevin than Flair, like even, oh man, like, I'm surprised Triple H didn't do it. He's like, you know what? I beat you last year, so I'm the I get to induct you, <laughs> right? Oh <laughs> uh, yes, yeah. but uh, I think yeah, Sting. Makes makes uh, and Flair like really the only other person I see that could make any sense inducting Sting would have been Jr. Just because of how long he he had known Sting. True. What about the Godfather? The Godfather is an interesting one. You know, he he's not one that immediately, you know, because he was involved with so many different groups, whether it was the Nation of Domination or Right to Censor. Um, Oh, of God, course, he had his great. Father. How horrible was that? Yes, don't don't forget the good father. <laughs> uh, but because this is like an attitude era thing, and they're in this specific character, and not you know Charles Wright and the, you know Kama and Papa Shango and all the characters that he's portrayed, I'm thinking, of... and. I don't know, Phil. I'll, I'll give my guess, and I want to hear who you think would make make a good uh, choice to induct him. I'm going to say Jerry the King Lawler inducts him because of the attitude era connection <laughs> and all that. I'm going to go with the King. You know, I almost was going to say King, but because every time, woo, get on the whole train, <laughs> woo, woo, you hear him making all the sound effects, getting all giddy with excitement because the hoes are coming down. But. Um, <laughs> If they allowed it, if he allowed himself to come out of character for this particular night, I could see one of two people. Okay. The one person I'm referring to, would one of them definitely, which would make sense, would be The Undertaker. And here's why. I'll give you three letters. BSK. Yep. <laughs> they, were part of that, they were part of that click right there. Now, the other one I could say would have been maybe Rikishi. Because he was yeah. the other one that was a part of that. Maybe D'Lo Brown, but that's an alternate, 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 alternate one. Oh, here's this one, Felix. You just got me, my, my brain thinking when you brought up Rikishi and D'Lo. Uh, since they are in Texas, how about Mark Henry? Because he was with Godfather in the Nation of Domination, and he was also, when uh, he was playing the sexual chocolate character, him and the Godfather had a lot of interactions. It's sexual, baby. Yeah. <laughs> and then we get to hear that oh, sexual chocolate God. music one last time. We get to hear the theme music one last time. Oh my God! You know, people have wondered why Mark Henry wouldn't get inducted into the Hall of Fame this year. He's been with the company twenty years. Uh, not 20, well, yeah, I guess it would be twenty years. Yeah, ninety-six. Yeah, but um, uh, you know, not a bad idea. They're in Texas, but I really think they're wanting to go for some of the ones that are. Uh, that, 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 that caused more of a reaction, which is why I think they finally inducted the Freebirds. Finally. And having Kevin Von Erich induct them. Do better. Yeah. I can't see anybody who. I mean, and I, I mean, there was speculation before it was announced 
as to which members, if any, if maybe Aaron, just the main ones, if they're going to induct all four of them, two of them, three of them. But it is all four of them. True, there's only two of them that are that are with us still that'll be there, which is obviously Michael P. S. Hayes and Jimmy Jam Garvin, who will be at the Hall yeah. of Fame to accept the honor on behalf of the group. Could they play into the to WrestleMania in some form or fashion? They'd be stupid not to. I still say that the scenario that we've talked about many times should play into the question the, into is, WrestleMania. Is, here's the interesting question, and I and I don't I don't bring up this question to disrespect Jimmy Jam Garvin because you know as a longtime WCW fan, I love me some Jimmy Jam sure. Garvin. Sure. But quote unquote the classic lineup of the Freebirds, he you know he wasn't a part of that. True. I'm, no, he wasn't. I'm wondering. I'm wondering if they're inducting Jimmy Jam both because him and PS are cool, but also because Freebirds, and you've only got one guy around to accept the induction. Maybe it, it doesn't look as good. Well, here's the thing. It's like you said. The main faction was Gordy. Was uh, what was the other guy's name? Help me out here. <laughs> Buddy, you always forget Buddy Roberts. I forget. I, I'm giving Buddy all kinds of hell. I'm sorry about that. God rest his soul. But I, you know what? That was that was your thing. I didn't follow the world class as much as you did. I knew who they were, but the name always seems to slip my mind every time. I was more familiar, believe it or not. When I started watching, I I didn't I wasn't aware of uh, Gordy being a part of the Freebirds. By that time, Gordy was with uh, Doctor Death in, in Japan. Yeah, but. Michael P.S. was with Jimmy Jam in WCW. That's around the time that I started noticing WCW because when those two were together. But to go back to what you were saying, yeah, that would be the most logical reason why they would do it. It would be silly not to have Gordy's family there and uh, Buddy Roberts' family there to join them. But I don't see them happen. See that see that happening. I see Michael P.S. and Jimmy Jam taking the honor. For the entire group. Yeah, you're right. That's that's a good point. I I'm just happy, you know. Even though I, I brought up the question, I'm just happy Jimmy Jam is getting some shine because I was like, I was always a fan of uh, Jimmy Jam Garvin. Uh, so it's, well, it's cool that he's going to be wrestling inducted. fans. Wrestling fans are so fickle because. So it'd be like a roller coaster. They're really, really high on something, and then they really, really shit on it all the way down down the roller coaster. And the thing with that is, yes, Sting is really not a WWE superstar. He was WCW, and that still r- runs in his blood. That was a company he helped build. And the same thing can be said about Jimmy Jam. He spent, I barely, maybe a cup of coffee in WWE, but I don't recall I ever, ever seen him compete in WWE. I could yeah. be wrong. And I probably am, but the fact that people get mad that these these stars get recognition and they never really spent a whole lot of time in WWE, let us not talk about the fact of the ridiculous uh, celebrity win that they got. <coughs> Drew Carey, <coughs> sorry. <laughs> well, you know, people that argue that for feeling... purposes. But yeah, like, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say people who primarily wrestled in the AWA or World Class or uh, WCW that they don't belong in the WWE Hall of Fame. They're just being uh, idiots or they're just, they're either idiots or they're too young to understand the history because here's the, here's the, the sad fact and it's a fact that I'm not really happy about Felix but it is the WWE is for better or worse now the keepers the guardians, if you will, of because they own everything from world class. They own the AWA stuff. They own the NWA slash WCW stuff. So if you want to learn about the history of wrestling, for the most part, go to the WWE. Yeah. Pretty much. But... We've got, obviously, coming up the next week, we've got the return of Shane McMahon on Raw. This storyline, obviously, has been the one that's been building the most. Hunter and Reigns, well, you know, I don't know. Did we ever talk about the, Yeah, no, no, you know, I take that back. We did talk about it, but it wasn't on our show. It, when, when we joined uh, 
Mike Mills on his show a couple yeah. weeks ago, it was brought to my attention that he did. <laughs> it was, God, it was so horrible. I didn't realize it until I saw him. Like, oh my God, they really did do that. When uh, Hunter came out at the end of the night and beat the hell out of Roman Reigns and Byron Saxton right in front of the camera, slips in the blood cap. So here you go, son. Here you go. And he takes it and he eats it. And obviously, he's got blood all over his face because he's drooling all over himself. <laughs> I was watching <laughs> and I was laughing because I'm like, wow, could they be more obvious? And they wonder why people get mad when they call it, you know, people get mad that they they call wrestling fake, but when you pull, it, pull stuff like that out, you make, you make yourselves look bad. How else could they have done it? Well, they could have done something differently than what they did. It is what it is. Where are they going to go with this one? The writing is on the wall, they say. Why have the match at all? Obviously, we know Hunter's not going to win, the, not going to hold on to the title past WrestleMania. I don't know. Unless they decide to have Rollins return right after WrestleMania to save the day or the night, maybe at WrestleMania to screw Reigns out again. I don't know <laughs> how, how well he's progressing on his injury, but Rollins coming back, oh, God, if Austin was still part of the show, we'd never hear the end of it. <laughs> but mm, with that I, said, I don't really know. Felix, what do you think? I was going to say real quick, if you will uh, – Allow me to kind of get into almost fantasy booking territory. <laughs> Please go ahead. If I'm if I'm setting up the uh, the Rollins return and also you know how things work out with Reigns and Ambrose, uh, I do. I think the first thing I would do is have uh, Roman beat Triple H at WrestleMania, and I would have uh, I don't. Of the what pay per view I'd do it at, maybe SummerSlam, I would have, or maybe maybe sooner, somewhere in there, I'd have the authority mm-hmm. book Dean versus Roman for the title to kind of try to split up the, the brotherhood. Man, uh, I would have Roman turn on Dean Ambrose because the authority says, hey, you know, again, like uh, I think it was Triple H or, or Stephanie in the lead up to that three way with, with Roman, Brock, and Dean. What's more important, your brother or your family? And I think, you know, we get the authority in Roman's ear. What's more important, your daughter or your friendship with Dean Ambrose? Roman joins the authority, takes on Ambrose, beats uh, beats Ambrose. Seth Rollins returns, gets a huge reaction, and this leads to a three-way for the title. And I'm thinking at SummerSlam, maybe we could do do that a little bit later in the year, Hell in a Cell, but... That's what everything is going to lead to. The, the, the Shield 3, everybody wanted two years ago. We're going to end up getting yeah. it a little bit later than scheduled, but I think it's going to end up helping all three guys. Yeah, okay. okay. I think, I think Roman, I Roman's got to turn heel. To me, to me Felix, the, the big key to all this is Roman's got to be the heel. So that way, Roman's the heel. Seth Rollins coming back from injury is not going to get booed. Uh, you know, he was already getting tears as a, as a bad guy, quote unquote. The so Rollins is the big hero coming back, and Dean's kind of this crazy guy in the middle that, that gets cheers, but he kind of he's like Stone Cold Steve Austin during the Attitude Era. He was a good guy that did bad things, and, and that's kind of the way I'd, I'd kind of set everybody up. You, you know, that match is going to happen, whether we want to see it or not. I actually wouldn't mind seeing it, to be honest with you. But um, sometimes, I'm, yeah, I could see it happening out there in Brooklyn. That would be crazy. We'll Just see what happens. The reaction to uh, the reaction to Rollins coming back in Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If it was anything like last year, yeah. And you know, it'd be great if, if, uh, <laughs> if he came out with John Stewart. <laughs> oh my God, was that horrible I, or what? Uh, <laughs> That was just oh, bad. man. You could tell Stuart, he was like a deer in headlights. He did not know what the hell he was doing. No. But with the upcoming roadblock, let's, let's, talk, about, let's talk about that for a minute. Give me a second here. I'm pulling that information up because I don't really know what matches we got signed so far. 
We've got two, I'm sorry, three matches. We've got, obviously, the main event. Uh, Triple H defending the title against Dean Ambrose. Do we really think there'll be a title change here, folks? Come on. Hello. Think about it. I can't see the title changing. They've already built too much publicity around what the main event's going to be. Could they include Ambrose in the match? I don't see why not. Will it happen? I guess we'll have to find out at Roadblock. They've got the match that we thought we were going to see at WrestleMania on a network special instead. Brock Lesnar takes on Bray Wyatt. Hmm. I don't know whether to shake my head <laughs> and be like, or go pshaw, pshaw, because you know what? This was supposed to happen, but they decided not to. It makes sense for it to happen at WrestleMania. It would, at least in my opinion, because they were building towards that. But this is how Brock gets his revenge on a network special? Tell me that doesn't sound weird to you. <laughs> <sighs> Sounds weird to me. I think it just shows, to me, it just shows how quick people in the office just kind of soured on, on the whole uh, Wyatt family deal. Because, yeah, like you said, this, this was the that led to WrestleMania. And I, part of it is due to injuries, and they had to reshuffle the card. But also, they just looked like, the Wyatt family is not really getting the reaction that they need to be getting to put them in this high-profile match against Brock Lesnar. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see how this match pans out. Obviously, there's no way Brock Lesnar loses this thing. So, again, Bray Wyatt takes another loss, which I think just hurts the character. Like, he, what, what, what has Bray Wyatt really done over the past six months that, that makes you think he's a top guy in this company? You know, that was actually going to be my next point I was going to bring up because as of now, he's incredible on the mic. He's a kooky character that people want to see, really like to see, yeah. and get to see. But they have nothing for this group. They put them all back together after they separated them. For what? Were they building towards the match against the brothers last, last, last fall for Survivor Series? Okay, that happened. And they moved on. And they took a loss when they really shouldn't have. Yes, I'm an Undertaker fan, folks, if you haven't already heard. <laughs> but let's call it straight to state. This match, they should have won it. Yep. And they have suffered loss after loss after loss. Look, either you give them something or you break them up for good. And have, have Bray Wyatt go back to being Husky Harris. <laughs> because, I mean, really, what is the point? They've done, they've done nothing for this group. And it's a shame because they're really that good. I really enjoy watching them, and, and, and they have not given this group anything. No championships. No no, no great opponents to go in and lose them. Lose, you know, Cena should have put them over. He did. Jericho should have put them over. He didn't. The brothers, I can go either way on that one, and I'd still be okay with it. Nothing. They have done nothing well, for this. Team. Again, they keep they keep putting him in no win situations, Felix. I think we talked about this with Mike uh, when we were doing the preview for SummerSlam. Like they keep putting Bray Wyatt in these positions where, yeah, he's getting to go in the ring with these legends and these big names, but mm-hmm. he really can't win, you know, because Bray should have beaten Taker uh, or the Wyatt family should have beaten Taker and Kane at SummerSlam. But the problem is. That's Taker's 25th anniversary, so it's like, mm, you can't have a birthday party and beat up the birthday boy. So that they were in a situation where they couldn't win. You know, you put him in there with Brock Lesnar. Bray Wyatt should beat Brock Lesnar, but he can't beat Brock Lesnar because we've got to keep Brock strong and powerful for WrestleMania. So it's another situation where Bray Wyatt can't win. And I think that part of the problem has been the Wyatt family as a group just hasn't connected with the fans, but a lot of it to me is the position that the company puts them in. It's like, yeah, you're, you're putting them in these big-time, high-profile matches, but they're matches that they're not going to win. It's a shame. It is a shame. I wish, I, I, I hope for better for these, for these guys because ultimately, why keep them together if you're not going to give them something? Give them something to work with. Nothing's yeah. happened now. They've been, they, they, they've been on the main roster for a couple of years now, and nothing. Not a damn thing. Uh, all we can do is hope at this point, folks, because 
Everything else is not working. <laughs> but I do want to <laughs> you know end what's the crazy show on me? this particular note for you, which I want to throw a question to the range. Just real quick. Which, go ahead. Go ahead. Real quick go before ahead. we uh, before we get to that. You know what is is kind of unintentionally funny and ironic right now? What's that? What's uh, Bray Wyatt's catchphrase? What, what's his big line at the end of his promo? Hello, the buzzard. Or, 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 that one, or it's run. Or, <laughs> find me. There's a few of them, so. <laughs> well, I'm going to go with follow the buzzard, Steve, because uh, that to me is, is just a, a great, interesting, weird catchphrase. But if you really think about it and look at it in the context of the Wyatt family and the way that they've been portrayed, it makes a whole lot of sense because you find buzzers, Felix, around something that these. Yeah. And this, the purpose is, is kind of dying a slow death. So it's like, yeah, we're we're following the buzzers, Bray, and they're leading us right to you guys. It's sad to say that because I know you enjoy them as much as I do, but they haven't done that yeah. before. So either put them out of their misery, or shoot them rocket, you know. At, Put him in a rocket and take him to the moon. And he's, it's not like this is a new character. Bray's been on the roster for two, two years, maybe a little, a little bit longer now. And it's like, mm, he's, he doesn't feel any bigger now than he did a couple years ago. I enjoy watching them. I, I really enjoy the characters very much so. But it is what it is. You know, nothing's going to change from this. Nope. <laughs> but I got to ask you, I want to kind of get away from this for a second because it's just going to irritate me. But because it's just things that just, you know, sometimes you see things and you wonder, what the hell is the point of this? But, anyways, my question to you, and I mentioned this on Thursday's show this past week as I returned to Nancho Mama's radio, um, it was mentioned that Bernie Sanders may drop out of the presidential race. But if he does, Jesse, the body of Ventura, wants to run for president. What are your <laughs> thoughts on the body becoming the president? President body. Oh, man. <laughs> um, now, now, with all due respect to the, to the body, uh, somebody that, you know, is obviously intelligent. He's got a big personality. I think he did. Sure. You know, but I don't think that he has any chance in hell to be president. Somebody play Vince McMahon's theme song. <laughs> no chance. That's what you got. That's bad. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. But yeah, so I just had to throw that in there, folks, because I know we don't talk much politics on here because, frankly, they're not worth talking about. But when you think about it, <laughs> oh my God, a w- WWE Hall of Famer. Could be president of the United States. What is yeah. the world coming to? <laughs> we're literally going to hell in a handbasket, folks, because we're going to have Mr. Hare himself uh, as a front runner in the presidential campaign against, well, a wildebeest that's named Hillary Clinton. <laughs> and you know what? That's what I said. That kind of stuff just gives me a headache. Who do you want to be president? Well, neither one of those two. No. You know. <laughs> If that were the case, we might as well have you know all the crazy back in the office trying to get oral oral service in the Oval Office. <laughs> well, that's the thing I was talking to Marcus about uh, this week when we were talking about the possibility of Trump versus Hillary. It's like, mm, like man, for as much as people on the right have kind of Obama, I think they'd rather have Obama than either one of these two. And as much as people on the left kind of crapped on George W. Bush, I think they'd rather have George W. Bush than either one of these two. Like these. Like, Donald Trump is a, a smart dude, and he knows how to get publicity, but I don't want to see this dude be the president, man. Like, it's, it's not going to be a good look, Felix. <laughs> no, no, it won't. Oh, well, what are you going to do, though? But, um, well, with, this, with that, folks, we got, we're going to go ahead and bring it to an end here. We, get, we do want to apologize once again for not having Mr. Fulton on tonight. We didn't anticipate it to happen. Uh, for the most part, we assumed he was okay. We wish him well, and we hope to bring him back again real soon. Uh, as far as the guest for next week, stay tuned, because we're still in the works of trying to narrow, narrow uh, this particular guest down. 
as we prepare for, or we're basically on the same road to WrestleMania, because I will be in Dallas uh, the first weekend in April. I get into Dallas about 11.30-ish Texas time, and then I'm supposed to head over to the WrestleCon and see some uh, familiar faces. But um, I'm supposed to head in, uh, head in there to meet up with Oscar and Mimi in Dallas, so it should be kind of fun because they've hooked it up to where we'll be going to WrestleCon. I think we'll be going to Kevin Nash, not Kevin Nash, uh, David Hero's uh, party, uh, WrestleMania pre-party, and then, of course, the main show, WrestleMania. Looking forward to seeing what happens. I'd love to go to the Hall of Fame. I'm not going to hold my breath. But uh, those in Dallas, you know, I'm looking forward to being in a crowd of over 100,000 people. That is going to be utter insanity. But uh, anyways, getting back to my point here, we'll see what happens as far as next week goes. You know, as we wind it down, things are going to be a little harder to get. If people are going to be in Dallas, we might have to do a show from Dallas. Who knows? We'll see what happens. But um, what's coming up on the Kings of Sports coming up this week? Well, brother, the latest edition of the Kings of Sport came out moments ago, and this week is a uh, very interesting episode featuring the Fight Network's John Pollock and Wei Ting as we continue our Road to WrestleMania series. John and Wei join us to chat wrestling. Uh, we also discuss uh, the NFL Hall of Fame. You know, this week we talk about the WWE Hall of Fame, but on the Kings of Sport we talk about the NFL Hall of Fame and T.O. not getting in. Uh, we are also interrupted by, by a telemarketer, and you guys are going to want to listen to this because the way that Marcus and the telemarketer go back and forth is just comedy gold. We uh, pay our respects to the late, great uh, Lee Rareman, better known as Hawk from American Gladiators, who uh, recently passed away. So you can check that out on the Kings of Sport. Uh, kingsofsport.com, facebook.com backslash kingsofsport, iTunes, Stitcher, and on Twitter, KOS underscore POD. That's the Kings of Sport with myself and Marcus Vandenberg from Yahoo Sports. And you can check it out every week. Um, and when I'm not doing that, I hang out with uh, FA and uh, we talk wrestling on Pipe Pi Bomb Radio. Every week on Pipe Bomb Radio, damn it. <laughs> I just channeled. I gotta say those feelings real there. quick, <laughs> real quick before you wrap it up, man. Isn't doesn't it just feel so much roomier now and and so much nicer now that uh, you know we we did some spring cleaning early a couple weeks ago. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like we got room to breathe. It has been man. brought to my attention. It has been brought to my attention that we may have made a boo boo, but I'll tell you more about that next week because Uh-oh. I think I've been I've been contacted by Saul's lawyer. We may have made Uh-oh. a boo-boo. We'll see where it goes from there, <laughs> but we'll talk about that next week. In the meantime, um, I do want to mention a couple of uh, quick facts here, too. It was two years ago. Two years ago? No, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was three years ago. Tonight, we were doing a show with Headbanger Thrasher, and it was brought to my attention, which caught me totally off guard and threw me completely out of loop that we learned with the passing of uh, William Moody, a.k.a. Percy Pringle, a.k.a. Mm. Paul Bear, that passed away tonight three years ago. And we send well wishes to a former guest, a good friend of ours of the show, uh, his son Daniel. We wish him all the best because I know the Moody family has suffered tremendous loss over the last couple of years. But uh, those of us who remember, obviously, uh, Mr. Moody was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2004. 14 in Louisiana, for WrestleMania 30, and had his both his sons there, and the Undertaker came out to pay respects to him. But it was three years ago tonight that we lost the world the wrestling world lost Paul Bear. So again, we send our heartfelt condolences and and share some tremendous memories that we've had with Daniel on the show and just remembering his father, who was a very good man, very entertaining. Other than that, going back to business here. Check us out on pipebombradio.net for everything as far as our social media goes, your Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, YouTube, Stitcher. I think we're still on Stitcher. iTunes. We're definitely on iTunes. We have been for a number of years. Check us out. Let us know what you think. 
because without you guys, we wouldn't be we wouldn't continue to be going. Four years strong, almost four years now. Well, no, I lie because I've been on the year technically in May would be five years, but revamping the show in 2013, so about three, a little over three years. And here I go rambling again. Anyways, pipebombradio.net for all of everything <laughs> that goes on with Pipe Bomb Radio with myself and Nate. And yes, it does feel nice not to have to include a third pain in the butt that he, no, no, no <laughs> name will be mentioned there. Austin. <clears throat> Sorry. I had to clear my throat. <laughs> but um, on behalf of Nate and myself for Pipe Bomb Radio, catch us next week, same time, same channel. In the meantime, keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars, guys. Talk to you all next week. Nate, I'll talk to you soon. All right, brother.